this big purple cat have a fishing pole? Sonic is about speed, and this is the complete opposite of that. In every sense of the character decides to just launch off the rails. <laughs> oh, playing through all these Sonic games is killing me. Can't even sleep anymore. What the freak? Who's here? It's, it's two in the morning! Skyler, don't open that door. I know you're a curious little guy, and I know it's really tempting, but seriously, do not open that door. It's for your own good. Hey buddy, there could be a lot of good things in there. Money, women, babes, babes with money. I mean, definitely not a bad video game. What are you doing over there, man? You're supposed to be a good angel too! I don't know, man. This guy makes a good point, and those are like, all the things that I like. Oh shit. When I first decided for some goddamn reason that I was going to soldier my way through all the 3D Sonic games, I really had no idea what I was in for. Growing up, I played Sonic Adventure 2 and I liked the game, so really I based my decision on that assuming that I was going to get some mediocre platforming experiences out of each of these games. Never did I consider that it was going to be bundled with mental anguish and fits of rage. Of course you hear about how bad 3D Sonic games are, but until you truly experience them, I don't know if you could ever fully understand what one means when they say that phrase. I've played four 3D Sonic games up to this point, and I gotta say that my experience so far hasn't been great. There have been parts of the games that I really quite enjoy, but then the functionality of the game sucker punches you in the dick. Sonic Adventure was fine, I only had fun playing as Sonic. Sonic Adventure 2 was a lot better control-wise and level design, but once again, I only enjoyed playing as Sonic and Shadow. The Chows are also fun. Sonic Heroes was a buggy dog turd that took Sonic's controls and chucked them out the window. Shadow the Edgehog was just a boring, uninspired, lifeless corpse. Sonic Heroes was the most frustrating for me out of those four, but Shadow by far is the worst one to play just because it's so boring. I will link the playlist to our Sonic series in the description and at the end of the video. So, now that you are up to speed with where I currently am as a gamer with the Sonic series, we can jump into what is hailed as the worst 3D Sonic game ever made. Sonic 2006, properly known as Sonic the Hedgehog. What is this? <laughs> what is this? It's no use! It's no use! It's no use! This game has given me nothing but sh**. The game is giving me sh**. No, no, no. F***ing <laughs> astonishing. You ever wonder what the inside of a tree looks like? Well, bam, there it is. It's, it's no <laughs> Take it, you f***ing game. You gotta look inside yourself and say, what am I willing to put up with today? Not f***ing this. Sonic 06 is an infamous game that anyone who plays video games is at least aware of its existence and reputation. Over the years, many people have already spread this game's cheeks and butt slammed the shit right out of it. I, never having played this game before, have always been curious as to why. What is it about the game that makes it so awful? Is it really as bad a game as everyone says it is? Does Sonic really get it on with the human? What would possess someone to make love to a hedgehog? Will I go insane if I keep playing 3D Sonic games? I guess what I really mean to find out is why we will never forget Sonic 06. The level design is so confusing. It controls like a bike with no wheels. The story is a weird cluster f The boss fights are broken. Sonic is broken. Knuckles is broken. Rouge the Bat has huge boobies. Eggman looks too real and gross. The pre-rendered cutscenes are f***ing incredible. That is not a bad thing. The real-time rendering cutscenes are bad. The load times, oh my sh**. This game would make me laugh my ass off and then make me want to rip my ass off. I knew Sonic 06 was a broken trash fire, but I don't think anything could have prepared me for actually playing it myself. The game is split up into multiple campaigns in the typical Sonic fashion. You play as Sonic, Shadow, and Silver, who is the new character they made for this title. It opens up with an incredible cutscene. Like, wow, Blur Studios went so hard on the pre-rendered cutscenes. This sh came out in 2006 and looks better than the Sonic movies. Let's do a fully animated Sonic movie with Blur animating it. 
This is a studio that has worked on projects such as Avatar, Love, Death, and Robots, the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare games, and the Sonic movies. I guess that checks out. I still want a fully animated Sonic movie, though. When you are greeted with these beautiful cutscenes, you think, wow, this is amazing. The rest of the game has to be this good, if not better, right? Well, that just depends on what your definition of good is, my dear viewer, because good is not a word that I would put in the same sentence as Sonic 06. Hilariously bad is a phrase I would feel quite comfortable putting next to Sonic 06. Right from the first level, I almost gave up playing this game and was debating what I should even do for this video because once again, I remind you, and sadly myself, about the self-inflicted challenge I've taken on of beating all the 3D Sonic games. Also, side note, a YouTuber I really like, CMN, has beaten me to it in more ways than one by beating every 3D Sonic game in a week, and then made a baller ass video about it. Damn, he's good. Also, now I have no reason to bitch because what he did was far worse pain than I. Doing all that dick twisting in a week sounds awful. I only twist my dick every couple months. Back to the first level and why I almost quit. A few minutes into the very first mission, there was a section that wouldn't load the floor, just the speed pad that I kept flying over and couldn't do anything about. I got several game overs trying for like 30 plus minutes and couldn't figure out how to get past it. I wasn't necessarily mad, I just quickly realized what people meant by this is the worst 3D Sonic game ever made, and it is both hilarious and frustrating. I gave up and decided that I would try again the next day, so I did. Once I booted up the PS3, it reset everything and I was able to beat the level because, would you look at that, the floor rendered in, wowie! That was the first of many glitches and bugs that would get me to laugh and then scream the f word from the top of my lungs in my room. I would get stuck on ceilings, clip through walls, fall through the floor, so much weird sh would happen all the time. It felt like the game was possessed and made it its life's mission to prevent me from succeeding. There were parts where I would play and just be like, wow, I hope the game decides to function properly so I can pass this level. This has to be one of the worst reoccurring things that I hate the most about the Sonic games I've played up to this point. I said it in my Sonic Heroes video and I'll say it again here. I know that I'm not very good at video games and I'm okay with that. But when a game just decides that it doesn't want to work and kills me that way, it's incredibly frustrating. Let's talk about some more of the sins that are in Sonic 06. For one, the camera blows. At times, it freaks out and whips you, it gets stuck behind things, it clips through the floor, and a plethora of other bullshit things it does. I hated this camera, and to top it off, it's inverted with its left and rights. Bad cameras will ruin any platformer. The next thing that I absolutely hated, and it was the same with Sonic Heroes, but worse, was how Sonic controls. Just moving him around is awful, jumping is very inconsistent, he feels way too slidey, and when you go fast, you can't control him at all. I'll get into the other characters too, but really controlling all of them isn't great. It just doesn't feel good at all, not to mention there are death pits everywhere, and I've just come to accept that all Sonic games have death pits, which still blows ass because speed and death pits don't go well together. The boss fights are not enjoyable, most are boring as hell, or so goddamn broken because you do what the game asks of you, but it just decides not to register that time. Like this dog boss fight. I run this bitch into the wall like the game wants me to, but I guess he didn't hit the wall at the precise angle. The infamous silver boss fight. It's no use! What a f***ing joke. It's an unforgivable piece of actual s***. So let me tell you how to beat it. Hit him right off the bat and then run away. Listen for the audio cue of when he talks, he is picking up items to hit you with. Run immediately at him and use your homing attack to hit him. Rinse and repeat because if you get too close, he force pushes you into the wall. Sonic's homing attack was slow but was mostly consistent for me, which is a plus. His ring dash move, however, was not. Once again, you slowly approach a trail of rings and clench your butt cheeks hoping that Sonic decides to do it right. Another dumb thing I noticed was when you go off a bounce pad, you have very little movement in the air like almost zero. So sometimes you'd go off a bounce pad and press forward to make it onto the next platform, but Sonic doesn't move and falls right back down. So what do you have to do then? You have to bounce off the pad and do your homing attack praying that you can control it enough to make it onto the next platform. But it never works the way we want it to and I'd fall right off the cliff. If for some reason you ever decide to experience this playable tech demo for yourself, you are going to die lots, so make sure you save often. There is no autosave feature, so whenever you beat a level, save. After you beat main stages, it gives you the option to save. 
In the hub world you have to do certain missions or side quests, so just make sure that you save after you complete one of those. Because once you enter a main stage mission and get an inevitable game over, you'll have to redo any of the hub world stuff you did. It's stupid and all games should have an autosave feature that you can turn on and off, and a manual save too so you can save whenever you want. The two biggest problems that I had with Sonic 06 was its performance and its loading screens. The frame rate was so bad literally the entire time. Walking in the hub world? Lag. See a bunch of enemies to attack? Lag. The levels blowing up? Lag. You want to make a jump to the next platform? Lag. It didn't matter what I'd do. Any little thing would lag the hell out of the game. There were, however, a couple times where an explosion would happen and the game would lag as it does and unintentionally look like a badass slow-mo scene from a movie. The loading screens were awful and are a big reason why you should never do any side quests. Talk to a person, loading screen. Then the person has one more line to say because for some stupid reason they couldn't have spit it out in the previous dialogue section, load. Then you do the mission, load. Then you beat the mission, load. Don't mess up though because you'll get another load screen for that too and you will have to do it all over again. At the very end of the game there are three trials you have to beat from these priest dudes. The world is ending but they need to make sure that you are prepared to save it so they put you to the test and if you mess these trials up you get face f***ed by loading screens. I did find it super hilarious that in one of the trials the priest is like hey make sure you pick best girl and Amy is the first one that shows up. She's like, oh my god, Sonic, make sure you pick me, we're best friends. And then Sonic immediately jumps over her right into the portal leading to Elise. Sonic got one look at her. <laughs> Sonic got one look at her and said, I'm not a furry. The other characters you play as also have their flaws. Shadow's homing attack is now like a combo, which is nice sometimes for taking down enemies with more health, but it's pretty slow, and at times you want to just hit ones and jump away. You fight Silver again as Shadow, but because of how his homing attack functions, it makes it way harder. You can't combo Silver, so when you hit him and try to jump away, sometimes Shadow would just keep hitting Silver with the combo and then get force blasted. They also brought his vehicles back, which are not great once again. His hovercraft over water sucks, and I fell through the ground a couple times. His flying glider was dumb, the car was dumb, the bike was cool, but dumb. Don't put vehicles in a Sonic game, they are dumb. Silver uses telekinesis to pick up items and chuck them at enemies. This wasn't really that bad. I honestly didn't mind playing as Silver other than he is slow as hell and I'm playing a Sonic game and want to go fast. But when I go fast as Sonic or Shadow, it's out of control and I have to slow down or I'll die and game over and have to replay those same f***ing three trials again because I forgot to save because some sick f***ing Sonic team thought it was a good idea not to put auto saving in this game! You play as Amy, and she sucks because her only attack is using her hammer, but you have to get within peepee -pee touching distance of an enemy to hit them. So I'd usually just walk up, get hit, lose my rings, and then attack. Her hammer needs a bigger hitbox. Playing as Blaze is bad, she sucks. Knuckles and Rouge were fine I guess, except for grabbing on walls was sometimes broken and I'd get stuck to them and couldn't get off. Flying as Tails just makes your butthole pucker because you can't end a flying animation prematurely and you have to play it out. You play as Omega for a bit, and he was fine, I guess. You can shoot enemies with his gun, and he has jet boosters to help you get across gaps. Overall, the gameplay of Sonic 06 is just a hot mess. It feels like you have very little control over the characters, and in a platformer, that is bad. Especially a platformer about speed. Now, in my Sonic Heroes video, I bitched and praised a lot about the level design, and I also talked about things I wanted to do in Sonic games, like snowboarding down an avalanche, running across water, mobbing in a city. Well, in Sonic 06, they gave me what I wanted, but just bad. Some of the level design in this game is really cool. Like, I'm running through a city that's on fire, but the frame rate is awful, and once again, controlling characters in this game is hot garbage. I snowboard down a mountain, but the physics in the game don't make any sense. I have zero momentum, and I'm going up the mountain. Look, I just clipped through the rock. I'm running across water. Or, I mean, sliding across water. Oh, but remember the floor doesn't render in. Nice. Sometimes the level design is so confusing on where you need to go next, so you just have to try a path you think might be it, and through trial and error you can figure it out. They are the equivalent of getting lost while running down a hallway. I'm not really sure how you screw up linear levels, but that's why rings are so important. Leave a trail directing me to where to go next, or place enemies, or really anything. The sequences where Sonic is running at mock speed and you can't slow it down were a nightmare. Any small adjustments throw Sonic off the map. There is so much in your way that you can get hit by. You can't move Sonic in the air, so if you jump, you better make damn sure you jump straight. 
Sometimes it was better to just hit the obstacle and lose rings than risk jumping off the cliff. They reused lots of levels in this game, which is disappointing and the same issue I had with Sonic Heroes. And you fight the same bosses over and over again too. The hub world was really dumb and another confusing mess. You have to talk to ugly NPCs who all have the same hey sound. Hey, hey, hey. Me new, me new, me new. The blue ones are side quests, don't talk to them. The yellow ones are just there to waste your time, and the orange ones give you hints on where to go, but keep in mind, sometimes you do have to talk to the blue ones. Just be on the lookout for the yellow star because that is your objective, but there are no waypoints and you can only see the star on the mini-map. <laughs> My god, the hub world is stupid. The art style is another issue I had with the game. They went for a more realistic approach for this game and it clashes. You've got cartoony Sonic, and then people. <laughs> I'm just not a fan, and Eggman, god dang, is he hard to look at for me. I'm used to the fat, goofy Eggman, not this gritty, four-nipple jacket Eggman. His yoga pants are hiked up past his belly, and he has the front part of his jacket tucked into those yoga pants. You know, maybe I'm the weird one, and Eggman just has the drip. The story and writing were all over the place. At this point, I'm pretty sick of the classic Sonic storytelling with you having to play through all the campaigns to get the full story, but while playing through the campaigns, it just feels like the game assumes you already know what's going on. Shadow has a creepy looking stick, Silver's here and is just a dick for no reason, Sonic is horny as f and only cares about saving Elise. <sighs> okay, here we go. In a nutshell, Iblis is a big bad monster that got Naruto'd inside Elise when she was a kid. Eggman kidnaps her and Sonic spends his whole time trying to save her. Mephilus is a dick and tells Silver that Sonic is the Iblis trigger, and Silver tries to kill Sonic, but he learns from Shadow, who learns from Mephilus himself, that Mephilus is a dick and is lying to him. Shadow seals Mephilus in this stick, and Silver seals Iblis inside Elise. By the way, there's lots of time travel involved in this mess too. Check out the final cutscene of Shadow's campaign. This sh is hype. There are lots of hilariously bad dialogue moments too. Amy screams, No, I'd let the whole world die to save Sonic. I feel like most people, Sonic himself, would sacrifice one to save many. At the end of Sonic's campaign, him and Elise almost die and then start <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Shadow kicks the shit out of Silver. <laughs> then there's another straight out of an anime scene where Amy and Elise have a girl moment where Amy cheers Elise on in pursuing her love. But Amy has no idea that they want to the same hedgehog. Probably because, I don't know, she's a human and Sonic's an animal. At the end, Mephilus breaks free and then in front of everyone shanks Sonic. Elise loses it, releasing Iblis, so Sonic, I guess, really was the trigger. Iblis and Mephilus combine to create Solaris. Sonic is dead, so everyone goes on a quick little adventure called The Last Episode to find the Chaos Emeralds. This final episode was a bitch and a half to get through, and you only have a few lives to do it all in. You play as Tails, Omega, Rouge, Knuckles, Amy, Silver, and Shadow, and boy, is this a gauntlet of bullshit you have to do to beat the game. The worst part of the whole thing was these goddamn orbs that suck you in and insta-kill you even if you have rings. Sometimes I jump up to an attack an enemy, boom, one appears out of nowhere and sucks me up midair. Those bastards were magnets that you couldn't get past. That was the other part of the game that almost got me to quit, but alas, I had suffered this far and I couldn't give up just yet. You collect all the Chaos Emeralds and then Elise pulls the ultimate gamer move in front of Amy, mind you, and slips Sonic the Tongue back to life. He wakes up in Super Saiyan 2 and is ready to partake in one of the stupidest final boss fights. Through the power of friendship, Vegeta and Trunks also go Super Saiyan to help Goku beat the final boss. You can switch back and forth between the three characters, but I had no clue how to hurt this thing. I'd basically spam moves until I found one that would deal damage until it died. It has a second phase that has that hype moment in anime where the intro song plays and it was super dope, but once again, the final boss itself was really dumb. There I was, staring down my poor life choice of deciding to play 3D Sonic games. I finally made it to the end of my frustrating and hilarious time with Sonic 06. I had become a lifeless shell of my former self, but I did it. I beat the unbeatable game. Did I do it? Oh god, please. Please let me be done. I did it. I beat Sonic 06. Oh my gosh. Oh, I think I'm gonna cry. Oh man. 
Was Sonic 06 quite the adventure? It was broken, it was glitchy, buggy, laggy, furry, and funny. But throughout playing this game, I felt like Sonic Team was really trying to make something big here. They had thrown lots of big ideas out there and were trying to make Sonic 06 something special. After looking into it, yes, the answer is yes, they were trying to make a banger here for the world. It was Sonic's 15th anniversary and they were trying to reboot the series. That's why it was titled Sonic the Hedgehog and not something else. But the development was horrible. Yuji Naka left the project to start insider trading and get caught many years later. I mean, he left saying that he didn't want to make Sonic games anymore. Not only did he leave, but Sega wanted Sonic Team to make a game for the Wii as well, but Sonic Team, knowing what they wanted to make for the 360 and PS3, would light the Wii on fire. So they split the Sonic Team up to have some devs finish Sonic 06 and have some work on a different Sonic game for the Wii supporting its motion controls. So yes, it's that corporate push and the rush development that led to one of the worst gaming disasters of all time. It really is too bad though, like I previously mentioned, they put a lot into this. They had new physics engines that they wanted to jerk off, which led to the creation of Silver and his telekinesis. But the physics in the game are horrible because they didn't get time to polish it. They had some of the best in-game cutscenes that I have ever seen. And remember, this came out in 2006. The music in the game bops hard, and that seems to be like the only consistent thing throughout the Sonic games is having good music. They got some really big artists, like Zebrahead. Crush 40 came back. And they even had Akon do a remix of a song called Sweet Sweet Sweet. F***ing Akon! They tried! They really did! There is some light at the end of the tunnel though. I found out while researching for this video that there is a fan remaster which fixes lots of this game called Sonic P-06, made by Chaos X. There is a great video by BickeryBox12 that I will link so you can learn more about it and even download the game and play it for yourself. Sonic 06 will forever go down as the game that could have been. Sonic Team set out to make a game that would be remembered for generations. Mind you that Sonic 06 came out the same year as some gaming bangers, like Oblivion, Twilight Princess, Gears of War, New Super Mario Bros. DS, Okami, and Wii Sports. Although it wasn't exactly how they wanted it to play out, Sonic 06 is a game that we will never forget. And you'll see It's a real shame. You could have been something great. We warned him what was on the other side of that door. I mean, we both knew what it was anyway. You're just a liar. It was pretty funny though, right? Yeah, it's pretty funny.